All right, Junkie Nation, Gorgeous George and goes delivering another MMA superstar for you. This time it's Justin James from Las Vegas, our hometown here. But because of the pandemic, he's there and we're here. Why does he have such a better looking background? Look at that clear sky on the back, the pink shirt, the uh, cool shades. Looking good, Justin, man. Congrats on your win uh, a few weeks ago. Hey, thanks, man. I really appreciate it, man. Just uh, sitting in Vegas, enjoying the heat, enjoying this weather. Uh, fuck, couldn't be happier, man. Yeah, and you know, I was in there. I hadn't been in the Extreme Couture Gym in about four months, so it was good to see everybody there, and uh, it was good to see you in there training. Uh, you can just tell, obviously, this win is probably life-changing for you. There's no more wondering, you know, do I belong in the UFC or anything? Not only do you belong, you made a statement in the first fight uh, in the UFC on short notice over a tough guy, a really, really tough UFC fighter. And some chatter too, man. Like, this is a really, really good time for you to reinvest in your career and, and keep taking those steps. Uh, yeah, man, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, right now, Frank is a super tough dude. Before even, you know, signing the fight with Frank, I was a fan of Frank. You know, he's been a part of four fight of the night bonuses. Uh, I've seen, you know, his uh, Damian Norris fight. It was really attracted me to Frank. So when I got the call on Wednesday to fight Frank Camacho, I was kind of like blown away because, like I said, I'm a fan of this guy. You know, I get to go in there and fight a super tough, gritty guy. And I knew it was going to be a slugfest, man. And, you know, I just was lucky to hit him before he hit me. I was going to say that, too. You know, you you beat him to the punch because he is a very dangerous striker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you got going, you, you know, not only were you uh, on point, you know, accurate, you were very efficient. And knowing that you didn't have a full camp, knowing that there's such a thing as UFC jitters, he's a veteran, this is your first time. I love that you um, saw your opportunity, seized it, but you were very, very calculated in doing it. Uh, you know, I, I just got to contribute that to my team and, and the experience, man. It's like, this isn't, you know, I think a lot of guys when they talk about the UFC jitters, you know, they're very inexperienced. You have to understand coming from the Midwest, you know, I, my, I had a very extensive amateur career, uh, you know, I had a very extensive wrestling career, you know, I, I've, I've, I've competed at the highest levels, you know, so, and not, not to mention the visualization of being there, you know, when Bruce was calling my name, you know, Justin the Guitar Hero, like, that's not the first time I've ever heard him say that, if that makes any sense. You know, I visualized that moment for so long. I felt I, there was no jitters. There's no nerves. Like, I just was able to let it all hang out. You know, I, like, like I've told people before, fighting on the smaller regional circuit is more nerve-wracking than that. You take a loss on the regional circuit, you're not going to make it to the big time. So, finally, I was just able to go out there and let it all hang out and throw punches and have some fun. And, you know, I got cut. I bled a little bit. You know, I was able to hit him really hard. And uh, like I said, man, I'm just having fun out there. And I really want to contribute, you know, it, it, to, to experience. You know, I've had 70 MMA fights. I was like my 68th MMA fight. So, like I said, no jitters. Was able to go out there and let it all hang out. You know, I wanted to ask you, and I might be way off here, but the look on your face when it all happened, it was a very, very confident look. It wasn't like, whoa, what did I just do? But because all that happened so quick, medicals, weight cut, uh, preparing for a guy that you said you were a fan of, I, I, I'm under the impression that it may have taken a while before it sunk in, maybe in the locker room, maybe in the shower. I think Israel Adesanya has this, his, you know, that's these epiphanies when he's taking a shower post-fight. How about you? Did it take a few days for it to all sink in exactly what you accomplished? I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now, like, I, I can't really describe it. It still almost hasn't sunk in, man. Like, I've dreamt of this moment for so long, and I know I've said this so many times, and people are so sick of hearing me saying it, but again, I've dreamt this moment so long, and you know, there's been moments to where I, I'll literally be dreaming, and I'll wake up and be like, fuck, it was a dream, but you know, the next three, four days after, you know, even watching the video of it happening, unfolding, you know, watching the fight over and over and over, it's even now hard for me to believe that's me, if that makes any sense. Uh, like I said, if I watch the video right now, like, I don't remember any of the fight. I just remember the first, the most thing I remember is Bruce calling my name. And, uh, you know, I remember thinking to myself like, yep, yep, I'm supposed to be here. This is my time, my time to shine. I'm getting goosebumps right now, you know, talking about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just the whole uh, experience is surreal. Getting to talk to you guys, getting to talk to, you know, other, other, uh, you know, podcasts and so forth, so on and so forth is, has just been surreal. It's, it's taken more than a couple of days for it to all set in. Just in that whole scenario of taking the fight, like George said, a little bit of short notice, uh, the pandemic going on and all that. And I'm sure 
a debut in the UFC, you would have wished you could have had your friends and family in the stands. But that moment from when you got the call to when you make your decision, can you talk about that time frame? And at any point, did you ever consider maybe not taking the fight? Uh, no, I, I never considered not taking the fight. Uh, like, like I told Sean and, uh, you know, my manager, 145, 155, 170, I show up, I blow up, I'm ready to go. You know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it was only a day notice. Yes. With that being said, the only part, it wasn't that I was out of shape. I was, I'm training diligently, you know, consistently. Uh, I was, the weight was tough, man. You know, I, I, you know, you know, walking, I, I had to lose like 16 pounds in, you know, 24 hours, you know, on the fly too. keep that in mind. Like it wasn't like I was dieting up to the fight. Although I was training, I wasn't dieting, you know, you don't really diet until I was keeping my weight low enough to stay within striking range. I thought that I'd have like a four or five day window. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be 24 hours, but I'm not about to pass another opportunity. So, uh, 24 hour notice I came in and, you know, I do what I do, man. I throw heavy punches and, uh, I try and knock people out. What are some of the things that have changed since this fight in your life? Uh, you know, it's probably just all, all, all the, all the social media for the most part. If I had to say the biggest thing that's changed is the social media. Like a lot of people are reaching out. A lot of people, you know, want to send me stuff. And, uh, you know, when I went home, you know, I felt like, you know, a lot of people want to take pictures and get my autograph. And man, I, I'm just, I'm just a normal guy, dude. I'm just a guy, you know, trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. And, you know, it's uh, for these people to put me on this pedestal that, you know, I'm someone special or a celebrity per se. I'm none of that, man. I don't feel like I'm any of that. I feel I'm the same person. Uh, I just got, I just happened to be in the right spot at the right time. I threw the right punch at the right time and hit him before he hit me. Not to be a smart ass, but are you chicken salad now? I mean, uh, not pretty, yet, pretty man. You know, ne never, never satisfied. You know, I, I'm never satisfied. I'm always just, this, this is, you know, this is more about me personally than, than, than anything else. Like this is about me proving something to myself that, you know, in 2007, when I took my first MMA fight, when I was 17 years old, my dad had to sign the waiver. I remember watching around that time, maybe it was a little bit before that I watched uh, uh, Tito Ortiz and Ken Shamrock. And I remember thinking like, man, I, I, I want to be like these guys. I want to, I, wanna, I, I don't remember what year, but I think maybe it's 2006 that I saw this. And I, I remember thinking like, this is what I want to do. I always wanted to be a professional competitor of something. Originally, when I was, when I was a child, it was WWE. My idol, even up to this day, Stone Cold Steve Austin, man, what I'd do to, you know, that I think that would be the icing on the cake to meet Stone Cold Steve Austin, because a lot of stuff I do in my life has been based off Stone Cold Steve Austin back, back in the WWF days. Uh, but, you know, it, it's been just a personal journey for me. I said I was going to do it. Now I did it. Now I'm resetting my goals and I'm aiming higher. I want to ask you a little bit about the beginning of that journey. Uh, I know that when you had to sign that waiver and you asked mom and dad, I think your mom wasn't the biggest fan of you doing this. And I don't know a lot of moms that really are. But throughout this journey, and especially now after what you've been able to accomplish, what were her thoughts? Well, you know, at, at first, you know, no mom or even a dad wants to see their kid get beat up, you know, especially when I'm 17 years old fighting grown ass adults. You know, I think my first fight, I was 17, I was fighting a guy that was like 35 or 36. You know, I go in there, shoot a double leg, I get choked down to guillotine in like two minutes. Like nobody wants to see their kid. So I can't say that she was the most supportive on that. And it was bad timing too, honestly. Uh, you know, my niece had just died. Uh, you know, she was a baby. She got, she was hit by, she was uh, uh, playing in the driveway and a car uh, Hummer was backing out and she got, she got hit by a Hummer. So it was really, it was bad timing for me to take my amateur debut uh, because of all the emotions of my family at that time. Uh, so I can't say she was very supportive of me first doing this. Uh, but I tell you what, now, you know, within, within a year, you know, I told her what my goals were. I told her what I wanted to do. I told her what I was going to dedicate my life to. And uh, she jumped on the bad wagon relatively quick. Um, she supported me coming out to Vegas. Uh, she paid for my first plane ticket ever out to Vegas to train in Extreme Couture. And, uh, you know, ever since then, it's just been downhill. It, you know, she calls me every single day to see how I'm feeling, to see how my weight is, you know, to basically just encourage me and tell me how great I am, even if I don't feel I'm that great. Um, I, I couldn't ask for a better supporter. And I couldn't ask for a better mom. She's she's incredible. She's bailed me out of set multiple financial um, problems. And not that we come from a lot of money, you know, it's but, you know, where there's will, there's a way. And, you know, my mom and dad have always supported me and uh, they, they've always gotten me out of binds when I need them to. All right, Justin, let's close up having a little bit of fun. We focused a lot on Camacho, but you also have another fight already lined up. Yes, sir. Gavin Tucker. I mean, we're like less than two weeks uh, away. Did you even have a chance to 
decompress, uh, you know, get a little fat, have some ice cream, have a burger before you were back in, in, in camp? Or did you know that these turnarounds might come quickly? And, and is that right up your alley? You know, I, I love quick turnarounds. Um, you know, I, I uh, wasn't thrilled about going down to featherweight for this one. Uh, you know, when uh, Jason called, he was in uh, Abu Dhabi and I was at the bar drinking beer and eating pizza. He called. He's like, hey, we have an offer for Gavin Tucker in four weeks. Can you make weight? I said, uh, can we ask for an extension, like a week or two extension? He said, I'll get back to you. Long story short, no extension. UFC knocks. I answer the door. 145, 155, 170. Not an ideal situation for featherweight, but it is what it is. I show up. I blow up. I'm going to knock Gavin Tucker out. Nice. All right. Um, here's another thing. Plus 290 against Frank Camacho. Please tell me that some of the boys at Extreme or maybe some people back home put a little cheddar on that one. That was a huge underdog that hit uh, you know, on that particular play right there. My uh, One of my good friends, Aaron O'Rourke, is a professional gambler. And, uh, you know, scouring the line for that, he got plus 320 at one point. You know, and, and I just love it. You know, all my whole life I've been an underdog. I love being the underdog. I love the, I just love the opportunity to create an upset. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's my time, man. And, you know, a lot of people did put some money on me. You know, I sent my cash app and my Venmo to a lot of people. Never got anything back, which was weird. You know, I really thought people were going to send me hundreds and thousands, but they didn't. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that people won money. I won some a uh, little extra cho. Uh, with the knockout, but uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier, man. Anybody that put money on me, I'm very happy they won money. Anybody that put money against me, go fuck yourself. <laughs> there you go. When this pandemic's over and our studio opens up again at the Mandalay Bay, uh, lunch is on us, man. I made some hey, money on you. Yes, so my that's, man. The, that's the best I can do. You know hey, what I'm I mean? Fine with it. I'm fine with I'm it. I'm not gonna send you a Tesla or anything because I'm not nah. a big time gambler, but sure. you know, some lunch or something. Yeah, uh, man, I appreciate it. Also, don't worry about John Anik. I got you. I checked him already. Ah. We had him on the show, and I said, it's Justin James, not Jesse James. He's not some gunslinger. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not slinging the guns. I'm a hand slinger, man. I sling these hands. That's all I need to sling. <laughs> no, he had he – had, look, that dude is the ultimate pro. He took it on the chin. He took the L. He understood. The guy's juggling so many things, and it's it's incredible, incredibly tough job that he has. But uh, he had busted my chops – uh, a few weeks earlier, and I had the opportunity to get him back. So he knows who Justin James is, and uh, and he was glowing about your performance. And then lastly, we'll close with this. You said, you know, back home they were asking you for your autograph, and you reached, you know, a small, small level, level of celebrity, and, of course, big days are coming. Let me tell you something. I was already telling my pals, when Junkie Nation played Extreme Couture, there was some UFC athletes on the other side of the ball, and I think I remember you – Taking uh, playing some downs for those guys, along with Mackie Patolo and Boston Salmon, Eric. Goddamn, Brad So the Barres. more we to get on on the uh, in the UFC and continue to do well, the better our loss looks, man. So yes. yeah, um, I that's do awesome. I do remember that. That was like two or three years ago. We played. Uh, we went out there and played like flag football or touch football out there uh, over on uh, Blue Diamond and uh, Buffalo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, everyone definitely. forgets Junkie Nation was up. Seven nothing. We scored the first TD before you guys steamrolled us back. Uh, it so, didn't help that Brad Tavares blitzes on every down when he's supposed to count like the three or something like that. But what are you gonna do? I think we we're out past in the beginning, but it was fun. Hell yeah! Anyway, listen, what was really fun was watching your debut uh, about just over a month ago. You did awesome. Congratulations! Not too many people have ice cold vape, uh, you know, blood running through their veins in a situation like that, and you did. So congratulations on everything that came your way. You worked hard for it. Good luck with the rest of the camp for Gavin Tucker. We'll be definitely be tuning in on uh, August 8th. And thanks for uh, joining us here on Junkie Radio Video Style. We really appreciate it, Justin. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys so much. And keep in line, the mine is plus 200 right now. Let's get some cash. That's what's up. All right, take care. Enjoy I'll your afternoon. You, man. Have a good night. All right.